what is human. We are fragile, vulnerable, mortal, finite beings. So long as we live in these fragile biological bodies, survival emotions will dominate everything. But you know, something startlingly new, potentially full of hope, is unfolding here in the second half of the 20th century. We can no longer consider ourselves exclusively human. We ought to want to stop being shoved around by the forces of nature. The most dramatic and the most urgent and the most universal need of all, so long as there is death, no one is free. When I was 10 years old, I met the most extraordinary person. He ignited my imagination. He challenged me, and he's been in my mind ever since. His name was FM 2030. Omni Magazine says he's a true visionary, daringly original. You actually changed your name, huh? I have, because I changed, laddie. Do I come from a family of 2030s? Not really. Conventional names, as a rule, define a person's past, ancestral profession, and so on. I mean, we all came from ancestors who swung from trees, but what matters is where we're going. In 1999, FM was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, and in July 2000, his body ceased to function. From here on, we are or ought to be resigned to nothing. We are at liftoff to a beautiful new age. As FM wished, he was cryogenically suspended. Cryonics is a low temperature preservation of a patient after death in the hopes of revival at a later date. We would like the law eventually to recognize that these are potentially people, they're potentially revivable, they're essentially like people in a deep coma. The point of cryonics is once you're in the tank there, nothing's changing. It's a day or a hundred years, it makes no difference because there's no biochemical activity. The rate of change is not fixed. It is not constant. Help accelerate the pace even faster. FM was always hopeful. Cryonics is just a safeguard in case of accidental death. You know, people like me, well, uh, I don't plan to die. Is anything happening? Is anything happening here? So, Mr. Renfeld, yes. Johnny Boston, lovely to meet you. Lovely Irving to meet you. Irving Renfeld, nice yeah. to meet you. Great, wonderful. Okay, um, so, we good? Shots um, good? We have to have a bad, bad okay, all right. Okay. Let me, do you mind if I move this? Go right ahead. Be careful. Brilliant. Anything so we can oh, get please. going. Here we are. Okay. Or well, there we were, on set, oblivious to what was about to happen. We're always in the dark. Well, I was. Is that talking going to go on back there? Hey, guys, shh, hush, quiet. My life hadn't exactly turned out the way I'd expected. Don't get me wrong, I have a lot. A wife, two healthy kids, a dog named Izzy, and a business. I make films. It's very glamorous. These are my colleagues, Brian, a little eccentric, but as good-natured as they come. Kayla, my assistant, office manager, confidant. She's the sort of the earth. Should I be more peppy or should I be more like serious? Be you. I am being me, I feel like. And then there's Zev. I met him 20 years ago and he's still wearing the same hat. And last but certainly not least, Jason, my best friend and business partner. 
very pessimistic, but loyal to the extreme. And I haven't always been loyal back. You know, since we've been together, I think we've started about 652, 653 different projects. They were all supposed to be cinematic masterpieces, or at the very least, money makers. But here we are, or there we were, making corporate films to pay the bills. And this lively looking fellow is Irving Renfell, my client, my only client. He's on his last legs. His firm wants to immortalize him. That's what we do, immortality and celluloid. I mean, digital, immortality and digital. I've been trying to reach you all day, and you haven't called me back. I, I have something really, really important, I and mean, I don't want to just leave a message. It has to do with FM and Cleo. It's good news. They are planning to, yes, bring FM back. The future is not just about new technology. The future is not just about the space program. To be sure, it's about that also, but it's also about changes in values. They're going to reanimate him. I want you to be there. Sebastian from Cleo is going to call you. We have to go to Cleo very soon. What decisions do we face? What will the 1980s be like? talk about that are some futuristic. In the 1970s and 80s, we're moving increasingly to something entirely new, and that is regionalism, common markets, regional blocks, uh, hemispherism, continentalism, and coincident with all this globalism. Wedding ceremonies, these are rituals that allow two people to announce to the world that they now belong to each other. Weddings would be more honest if the bride and bridegroom peed on each other to establish their territory keep out everybody, this is now my property. We don't even use the term broken homes because that's really a, 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 a unnecessary. We, we're changing our vocabularies. We no longer have bachelors, we have singles. We no longer have broken homes, we have single parent homes. Let me tell you what vegetarianism or vegan, veganism has to do with the future. It has everything to do with the future because vegetarianism has to do with nonviolence. It has to do with longevity. It was just so right on point when whatchamacallit called me. I'm having a senior moment. When Sebastian, when Sebastian called. I thought it was a joke. I thought, OK, Sebastian. Because it's come too soon, I thought, in a way. Why do you think so soon? Well, I thought it would take years before they were ready to do something momentous like this. I was just thinking about my mother today and how, anyhow, how I, w I wish she had liked FM more, but I felt I didn't appreciate everything she had done for me. She was a piece of work, but FM got along with her, and he'll do it again with your mother and everybody else, but she really thinks the pl I'm going to send a car for you to tomorrow. You know what you should do tonight? Get a pad and write a list of questions that we want to know about. Look, man, no offense to FM, but why him? I mean, if you want to make a splash, you know, defrost Ted Williams or defrost Walt Disney. Walt Disney's not even frozen. We're talking about immortality. We're also talking about the plot of Pet Cemetery. We need to film everything. FM is coming back. She's going to live forever, this dog. It's wonderful. Look. Have you seen Zoe's ballet shoes? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see. They're, they're I see. Here. I see. So, so. Johnny, yeah. why are you going off on some sort of science fiction experiment? One good thing about dying? Well, I guess it's the end of the credit card harassment. I love free falling into the future, coasting into the future. For me, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful trip. I hope for you it is too. Johnny, it's medically impossible. Peter, since when are you a chronics expert? You're a psychiatrist. My colleagues in the neuroscience field are on the cutting edge, OK? And trust me, nothing points to this. Not for decades. So it is possible. Yeah, of course it's possible. Ah. He's frozen, and so you just unfreeze him. Ah, ah, my lovely <laughs> so, girl. So. Yeah. My lovely girl. She knows. Cleo took advantage of FM, and now they're doubling down on Flora, OK? 100 bucks says you go down there, and they hit Flora with a rate increase. Why is everybody so cynical? Hello, newsflash. FM is dead. 
He's preserved. Well, legally dead, which is why Clio isn't bound by any FDA regulations. Okay, there are no clinical trials for the deceased. Peter, maybe you should speak to Flora. No one speaks to Flora. Nobody speaks to Flora. Oh, okay. Newsflash, someone's got to pull the plug on it's this because we're setting Flora. Flora up for a colossal breakdown, depression, okay? Your motivation for getting this done is so that you don't have to suffer by watching the people that you love around you die. Yeah, what's wrong? I don't want anyone to. I don't want to. Guys? Yeah? There's a cake uh, sitting here with a candle. Okay. <laughs> this is... Yeah. So... A lot of people are commenting on how unpredictable this season has been. Your own predictions have been quite off the mark so far. Well, that's true. I think a lot of people are feeling very uncertain about their future. And I think this election is reflecting this uncertainty. Is that drop it. Give it back. Drop it. What you're seeing today is two main trends. You have a trend that is fully embracing individualism, I at the center of the universe, and you have a whole other strand that is going back in full force to ultimate rootedness. And they are both extremisms, by the way. Johnny, are you smoking again? Uh, um, I'd like to say no, but I can't lie you to you. I can't have, lie to you. You I have to I stop. I can't lie to you. Just a point, Jason, no offense, but I don't know how they'll feel about our bringing Jason. Uh, none taken. It's, it's okay. I think we're getting off on the wrong foot. We're not supposed to tell anybody, and now we're filming the event. You know, Sebastian is, is a very good friend. He was a student of FM's at the New School. I just don't want you to antagonize him. Why, why would I do that? Because, my dear, that's what you do. Isn't that true, Jason? You do do that sometimes. You do. Okay. Well, FM had a very complicated contract with Clio. It specified everything. He wanted to be first. He wanted to be reanimated. He wanted you to document his return. But ultimately, I have the final say. As you should. I decide whether or not this is the right time for them to start this trial. He did want to see us on his return. You and me in the future, he predicted. I can, uh, this doesn't look like... Uh, oh, yeah, it's the one with the awning up there. That's it. This is it? Yep. Doesn't look like much, but fancy. this is it. Very fancy, this is. Johnny, behave yourself. Hi, how are you? Hello. How's it going? So, um... Johnny Boston, Flora Schnall, and uh, Jason Hefter. Um, to see Dr. Sebastian Smith, please. Um, may I see your ideas? Yeah, hold on. Hey, 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 I've got this, Arlene. Uh, Laura. Oh, my God. <laughs> great to yeah, see you again. So nice. Thank you for coming. Thank you, that was oh, great. Oh, well, this must be Johnny, but all grown up. Yes? That is. I got that, that right? Is. Here's somebody I don't know. Who is this? This is Jason Hefter. Uh -huh. He's, um, my good friend, business partner, and um, going to help us film the reanimation. Oh, and, and, he's a, and he's a budding futurist as well. <laughs> hey, let's not get ahead of ourselves, okay? I can't have you filming anything uh, just yet. In fact, I'll need you to sign an NDA. Thank you very much, Darlene. Here you go. What's Sorry. with all the, the secrecy? Well, hey, I don't have to tell you. Not everybody is as ready for this as we are. Yeah. I'm not ready to sign anything. But there they are. I'm just, They'll just I'm sign ju I'm, ju I'm just happy to be here. They have their yeah. lawyer along. Well, you're and happy? He's happy? <laughs> that that makes us all happy. <laughs> Say, Johnny, I haven't seen you uh, since you were uh, 12 or 13 at one of uh, Flora and FM's parties in the Hamptons. All right, so listen. We are scheduled to meet with the entire reanimation team in the Singularity Suite. We don't have much time, but I can give you a quick tour. Okay. So let's go this yeah, way yeah. and, uh, all right, what the heck, you can film this part if you like. Lovely. What is this weird thing down here? Anonymous from the outside. This is called the beginning, which we'd like to think we're always in the beginning. We have some very special people here. We do. Certainly important to me. Yeah. Um, These are photos of some of the patients who are preserved here. Uh-huh. Oh, yes. not, not all. No, not all. No, it's obviously it's the individual's choice whether or not their cryostasis and, and is made public. And some don't want to. That's right. I wouldn't have chosen that 
Well, photo. Good for you. It's not we, my favorite. The, the good thing is we have photos of FM all over this place, oh, so this is just one of what them. What about the dates that used to be underneath Well, each? you don't forget a thing, do you? <laughs> we did a remodel. We took uh -huh. the dates off because we figure it's a new day, a new beginning. Dates, they are not important They're where we are going. <laughs> Johnny, I think you're going to be impressed when you see uh, the rest of the facility. After okay. you. I am impressed. Go. I don't want you to think I'm not impressed. This no, is great. Good. This is amazing. We really thank yeah. you for having us. All right. Our first stop here is the triage area. Which and is... as you can see, it is uh, much improved uh -huh. since FM came to us. This is the, the first stop for the recently deceased uh -huh. on their cryogenic oh, nice. journey. This is Dr. Muller passing by right here. Oh. Sylvie, so Oh, from... Uh, from Switzerland. Oh. Yeah. And this is Dr. Brighton, uh, who heads up our uh, standby team. Oh, Marcus, nice would you too. mind going through the process briefly for them? Oh, well, oh, absolutely, uh, sure. Uh, Johnny Boston, uh, damn glad to meet you. Good to meet you, too, Johnny. Hello. Flora Schnall, Flora. thank you, Doctor. Marcus, good to meet you. Nice to see you. Well, when the patient first arrives, we immediately transfer the body and begin ice bath resuscitation. Uh -huh. Then we introduce a combination of 16 medications and acids, et cetera, all designed to slow the metabolism and ah. limit cellular damage. Oh, Frank, how are you? When the patient's body temp reaches just above freezing, they are brought in here where doctors on off and Fifey take over. Doctors, why don't you introduce yourself? I'm Laura Very nice to meet you. Hello. Oh, it's a real honor. Very nice. Johnny Buster, yeah. how are you? I don't know. This is uh, Jason Hefka. Yeah. Hi, how are you? Hello, Dr. Dr. Fifey. Yes, of course. Well, this perfusion machine is used to slowly replace the bodily fluids with a cryoprotectant, which is a kind of biological grade antifreeze. Our goal is to prevent ice crystal formation. In a full body suspension, we go in through the chest cavity, but if we are only preserving the brain... As in uh, FM's case, or as will be in my case 60, 70 years from course. now probably. Go on. <laughs> then we go in the carotids. Yes. What uh, is the advantage of head versus full body. Some of our patients are very attached to their bodies. Right. We here at uh, Clio are willing to uh, honor a lot of different preferences, mm -hmm. although personally I know Sebastian and I agree that the... It's head. Yeah. Right. May, I, may I see, can I see what this is? Sure. Is that cool? This is so cool. Oh. Is that okay? That Let is me... a very expensive toy, Johnny, but... Uh, uh, it's great. No, what thank the you. heck? This is really no, good. No, no, no. Well, Johnny, we can't afford that. Please. Okay. All right, let's please. move on. Here we go. Thank you very much, doctor. It's a great job today. Thank you. Nice to meet you all. Really all right. incredible. Well, let's move on. The best is yet to come. This is where we keep all our patients while they are awaiting reanimation. Wow. Purgatory. Uh, well, actually, more like limbo since there's no sin involved. It's a place to wait comfortably. Depending upon whether the suspension is full body or cranial, we might get 15 to 20 patients per silo. Well, FM was always very social. I'll need you to turn that camera off now. Are you oh, okay? Uh, yeah. yeah. You sure? Thanks. I was so impressed with the facility. It's just light years ahead of my last visit. What about his brain? Any damage in the process? We don't anticipate any. All our computer models and pre-testing have shown considerable self-repair of cells with slow incremental warming. You are all so optimistic. Well, we have every reason to be, Flora. Without FM, none of us would be doing this. His philosophies have been a great personal inspiration for me since university. This trial and the opportunity to meet him is the great honor of my career. It's very moving, thank you. I think we're all on the same page. Our goal is to bring FM back, let him see all that he's helped create. And personally, I still owe him dinner. He'll accept? <laughs> <laughs> Take a look at this. He'll have to bring me to them. Absolutely, let's all have dinner. I'm a little too emotional to review this, but may I take it with Absolutely. me? Absolutely, take your time. It wasn't what I expected, yeah. but uh, I, I, I'm just, well, it's a big, very big step, and they've given us, you know, a pound of documents, and and I'm going to review them. Did you get everything? Like we got Johnny, it, keep on trucking. Your mind is racing because that's what it does, but it's really important that you tell no one, yeah. that Jason tells no one. Yeah. What does it mean you use the word transhuman? What is a transhuman? Transhuman, you know, way back in the uh, 1960s, a lot of things were happening at the same time. And the thought occurred to me that 
Maybe what was happening was that we were moving toward the creation of entirely new beings. In the coming years and decades, we will move toward the totally non-biological bodies which will enable us to live indefinitely into the future. Got Duke, Harvard, MIT, Princeton, Dr. Fifey. She graduated high school when she was 12 and won the Alexander von Humboldt Fellowship. Every single one of Cleo's doctors checks out. They're, they're legitimate. Yeah, but this footage is crap. Johnny, it was shot through a keep-on truck and belt buckle. It's fine. I don't want fine. This is an epic event deserving of an epic film. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's but no I... film. There's, there's no film. There's a film. There's a film. Johnny, don't do this. <clears throat> right here. What's that? Promotional documentary, internal use only. Didn't you read the episode of uh, War and Peace mm. we signed? We shoot what they want, document them taking FM's reign, putting it into that bionic avatar, then boom, he says howdy, fade out, and hand the footage over, okay? Because if we do anything Johnny-ish on this, we're screwed. Listen, when FM comes back, he's gonna okay everything. You have to at least consider that he may not come back. I went to Cleo and, um, and it is, it's real. FM is coming back. You saw proof. I, well, not exactly, but you know, you say everything happens for a, a, a reason and this is happening for a multitude of reasons and, it, and you know, it's, it's, it's gonna work. Johnny, what Cleo is doing, a lot of people are gonna have a big problem with. I mean, some people may have a problem, but this is, this is you know, a, a choice of the good outweighing the bad. And like FM said, that eventually we will overcome death. I mean, and that we need to, we're going to embrace that. Okay, so hooray, everything goes Johnny. FM is back, dead is dead, whatever. Yeah, death is dead. I guess that's, a, that's got a nice ring to it. Yeah. yeah that sounds good. Death is dead. Um, who controls the technology? Is this something that only the rich can afford or is it for everyone? Well, they, they said they wanted to do this the way FM wanted it done. You know, this what is... does that mean? In a rapidly converging world, it's a society made of a few winners and a whole lot of losers. This is not what we ought to have here in this late 20th century. In our new world of abundance, technology will belong to everyone. For only when technology belongs to everyone are we truly free. Today we say that about 40% of the jobs are really can be easily replaced through automation. Give us another 15, 20 years, something has to give in. We have to make wholesale economic recontexting to uh, provide for everybody without having, you know, full employment. But he'd love the idea of coming back with a wonderful robotic body and be able to go on with his work, because if there's anything he loved, he loved his work. He, you know, woke up every morning thrilled to get started and, and go to his desk. As long as it wasn't too early. Too early. No, he got better. When he moved to, I think, California, finally, he realized he had to get up earlier to see people. Do you think it's going to work? Do you believe that it's going to work? Honestly? Yeah. No. Why? Well, because it's beyond my comprehension. I suppose because all my fundamental knowledge of what we're about will be destroyed. And uh, we'll, we'll start with a blank page after that. How will Flora react to that, Johnny? What do you think? I don't know. I actually don't know. It's very frightening. It's frightening. If, because if this is going to happen, then it's, it, it completely revolutionizes the whole concept of the beginning and the end. I don't know whether he can just get on with his life as if this had not happened. Will he be very shocked to see us, even though hopefully we don't look our age, 30 years later looking different, being fat and having had prostate cancer and all kinds of rubbish, He's going to be a miracle, but he's also going to be a bit of a freak, isn't he? And what well, are you telling these people? I'm telling them we're making a film about, wait for it, don't have a heart attack, the future. A fake movie to cover the real documentary we're not supposed to be making. 
That's yeah, good. It's, uh, I like that. Yeah, it's Shakespearean. Shakespearean. I'm not sure what the effect would be of the first person coming back. I, we're not going to do this tomorrow and suddenly bring someone back. I can, I can assure you that's not going to happen. That would suddenly have a drastic effect. Uh, I mean, you're asking, OK, well, how do you bring somebody back? How is, how is FM going to be brought back? Well, first of all, OK, my opinion, uh, if, 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 if FM was done with the, uh, with the techniques uh, today or even you know, a few years ago, uh, there is a reasonable chance from the information that I've seen that a significant amount of destruction has occurred in his brain. I don't know what that means for uh, the ability to recover him, but I would not be a, want to be in his situation. Current cryonics techniques are not able to simply be reversible. There are people that have been cryonically preserved that are just gone. They're just gone. And I, I think that it's likely, although I wouldn't necessarily say that this is the case, that up until now, they're all just gone. I had a friend who was, um, his name was FM 23rd. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You knew of FM? Uh, I never met him, but I know of him, of course. Okay, uh, so I might end up being neighbor. <laughs> I, I saw, well, hopefully you won't be anybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You will, <laughs> you will meet him in, in the flesh. Yep. I certainly wouldn't want to be the first test subject. I don't want to be the 10th or 50th uh, test subject once we are very, very certain it's uh, actually working really well. Uh, so it's not rational to want to be first. We probably have done it to simple animals and then more complex animals before we do it to humans. I think that as we make more and more progress in these very early stage proof of concept areas, and especially as they... Look, man, no matter how many scientists we interview, you're not going to find somebody who's going to tell you exactly what you want to hear. Sam. Sebastian. Hey, Johnny, what are you doing here? I left you tons of messages. Yeah, I've been really busy. I'm sorry about that. Listen, I'm running late for a doctor's appointment, but you're on my list. Yeah, but what are the odds of success with FM? Zero, unless Flora signs a necessary paperwork. But is FM just a guinea pig? Of course not. But uh, until Flora signs, we really have nothing to speak about. You get that? We now have a lot of updated information. Information is potentially a lot of power. It can catalyze a lot of changes in our own immediate lives, in our personal lives, as well as in the world around us. You like to make films, really? Yes. What kind of films do you like to make? I don't know. All kinds. I especially like films about people. About people? Yeah. Like me? No. <laughs> no, no. I, I that's. You no, know, I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's. Uh, I, I I don't like to think about it. You know, I sort of go. You know, this is the project of a lifetime. We got to jump in. We got to do it. We can't think about it. We have to push Irving another week. Shani, I don't think Irving has another week. Before we keep going with Irving, though, can we talk about some of the expenses that are coming up? Who's financing the rest of these interviews? Are we going to just sit back and wait for things to happen? Let us not sit back and wait, but let us become involved, involved directly and actively in the creation. Hi, Johnny. It's Flora. I got all your messages. Yes, I think a tribute film about FM is a great idea. I can cover the expenses and maybe we can even have a, a fundraiser in the Hamptons to raise some money. But keep me in the loop. Don't go off on a frolic of your own. Bye for now. I had no intention of making a tribute film. We had no money. Flora would, would understand once FM was back. The interviews would confirm whether Cleo was on the up and up. I mean, I was protecting her. She, everybody seemed so indifferent. So one little lie to get the truth out. The truth was, I just wanted to make a movie that would fix everything. I really did think my movie and FM's return could create a freer society. But there's nothing like a grandiose rationalization to justify just about anything. You have created your own story. Do you realize that? Yeah. Do you? 
uh, just the beginning of my story. One of the reasons his last name was Digits, it was kind of a gimmick, I guess, but he felt like that 2030 would be the year where we would have solved things like the water problem. Or along the way, lots of different problems, so that we would be a less competitive society, that we would be a much more universal society. I think you're conflating what's possible in terms of technology with how much it will change the human condition. When the average age is 100 or 150 and everybody takes for granted they have clean water and electricity, their aspirations will be all of those are a given. People see no place at which they never want anymore. They're always competing. And so no matter what the state of technology is, while it's always bringing us all up, the human ability to live in peace and to share and all of that is not affected by that. It will be independently solved or not solved in some other way. Do not assume that our human problems of, of fear and hate and mistrust are going to be made better or worse by technology. That's not what technology does. Oh dear. Johnny, say, why have you been talking to Ray Kurzweil? Uh, Ray, what do you mean? Have you been discussing the trial? Of course not. Of course I haven't been discussing the trial. What have you heard? Well, what I've heard isn't good, Johnny. It's not good for anyone. Yeah, of course I know. I, of course I know what it means. I, I know what's at stake in terms of the trial. I know what's at stake. And what you've, what you've probably heard is the fact that we've been doing a completely separate film, a completely separate film entirely. We're doing a film, it's a tribute to FM, Flora's financing it, and actually we've been interviewing tons of scientists, and Flora mentioned that we should interview you, and I thought it was such a good idea, so we would love to interview you, we want you to you be You should have told me. I should have done. You're not expected to respond or adhere to a philosophy simply because somebody has said so, or somebody had written so 2,000 years ago, or 4,000 years ago, or 800 years ago, or 8 million years ago, but because the thing makes sense to you today. Our entire project can be jeopardized by the smallest public issue, Johnny. Of course, the trial may not come off without Flora's signature. You know, she hasn't returned any of my calls. She's in Miami, and, and she's not blowing you off. She's just in Miami. Listen, there's something I'd, I'd like for her to see. This Thursday, 1 o'clock, at Clio, it's important that Flora be there. I'll try to get her there. Thanks. Good we ran into thanks, each other. Thanks, thanks a lot. All right. You really do smell good. Thank you. <laughs> we have paying work right now. Why not stay focused on that for a change? Flora needs me. I need to be there for Flora. I mean, I've never seen her like this. I promise I'll make it up to you, to Zoe, to Izzy. I'll make it up to all of you. Johnny, you also have to ask yourself why. Why now, all of a sudden, do they want you to see a pig? A special present from Brian's personal collection. What is this? It's a thermos cam. I have no idea what he uses it for. Make sure you have a solid base to set it on and obviously don't drink anything out of it. Well, listen, you can't film today. Today is just for FM's close friends and family only. Really? That's what oh. I have to do. Yeah. I'm uh, so disappointed, because I really would like Jason to see this, too. Well, this one's a matter of security, so I don't think we want any filming today, and we certainly don't want to take any chances with FM's uh, safety and security as well, right? OK. OK. All right. Hey, listen, this is what you can do. Um, you can uh, hang out in the uh, cafeteria, uh, if you don't mind. We got the sandwiches and free Wi-Fi. What you are going to witness today, besides being quick, Now, before we begin, a little background on the uh, breakthrough trial that we are all honored uh, to be a part of here. This is test subject 372414, but uh, we have affectionately called him Cleon. Adorable. He is. Male grain-fed and, as you can see, happy as a pig and, well, you know. We injected Cleon with a barbiturate potassium paralytic solution, essentially a controlled euthanasia. Once anesthetized, after the heart was no longer functioning, we perfused the creature's carotid arteries with a cryoprotective solution designed to endure vitrification without any further damage to the cells of the brain. 
This solution is very similar to what was used on FM in 2000. And once Cleon's blood has been flushed and replaced, he was vitrified in a cryo storage for exactly six months and three days. Once the animal was removed from storage and thawed to an acceptable but still very low working temperature, we immediately began a process reversal. Again, perfusing the carotid arteries, flushing out the cryoprotectant and replacing with a modified blood proxy. This was designed to reverse any mild toxic interactions that the cryoprotectant might have with the cells. And now it's simply a matter of restarting Cleon's heart. Now, of course, Cleon was in better physical condition than most of the patients who uh, begin their preservation uh, uh, here. Uh, but luckily, FM doesn't have to worry about the condition of his heart or anything else. All he needs is his brain. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is right. <laughs> Can we, can we go in there? Let's hang on a moment, and we can. Yeah. I'm scared of pigs. Look at what we've done. <laughs> you want to say hello? Really incredible. Yes. Wow, right amazing. Picture. Impressive, Flora, yes. I'm speechless. All right. So is the pig. <laughs> I can't fucking believe I missed this. It's like I said from the beginning. FM is coming back. All right, so, so maybe we can stop death. But, you know, I mean, the question still is, sh should we? I've known Flora for a very, very long time. She's been the most wonderful, wonderful friend to me and our family. She's been the surrogate mother and grandmother to our children and grandchildren. She is really, I would say, leaving those compliments aside, she is dynamism personified. We live in a discontinuous world. The quality and the profundity of our involvements ought not to be determined by their duration. Hope you're doing well. Um, listen, I'm having a, a bit of a tough time reaching Flora. I left her uh, quite a few messages. To be honest, after last Thursday, I'm a little surprised we don't have those signed documents by now. I know this is an emotional time for her, but I think you and I both understand what needs to happen here, so uh, maybe you'll speak to Flora for me to huh? move things along. I'd appreciate it. Thanks. The dynamic individual today is in the process of growth and changes. Goes from one job to another, one profession to another, from one community to another, taking the place of the lifelong companion or what have you, are networks of friends. Wonderful. Ruth Ginsburg told this story. Ruth and I were in the Dean's Moot Court Club, so he had all of the club to dinner. Ruth and I were the only two women. He said, oh, I don't know what you two women are doing here, taking up the valuable place of men. And I said, I don't know, Dean. I don't know about Ruth. I'm here looking for a husband. <laughs> I don't understand how I don't know, remember who these people are. I should have written down their names. I have to look at more closely. Well, he's, 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 it must be from a wedding or something, right? I mean, this is... Yeah, this is a... Who wears a pink carnation, you know, unless, unless they're a spy. Have you seen this? No, oh, what is it? Can I see? Uh, guess who the, the villain is. FM. FM is the antagonist. Have you read it? I mean, how do you know? FM wouldn't have gotten through the first three pages. It's about a transhuman conspiracy to devour the world. Yes, proclaimed the transhuman representative. Only we immortals are truly vested in the future. And as such, we and we alone will decide who holds the right to bring new life forms into it. It's all about FM, but he knows absolutely nothing about FM's philosophies. You really have to go out to the university and interview Dr. Thomas Wainwright and set him straight. Oh, FM can set him straight himself in a couple of months. Uh, I'm not sure about that yet. We just saw Cleo bring back a pig. Pessimism, cynicism, these must be outlawed forever, FM cried. 
the genetics of the cynic will today be destroyed for all times. And with that, he activated the trigger. Mm. Spoiler alert. I'd <laughs> much rather remember FM as 100%, not a synthetic version of him. No, I, I understand that. I, Technology I get that. has not yet caught up with FM's imagination, let alone surpass it. It has, Flora, it has. I mean, we're living, the, we're, certainly technologically, the world that FM envisioned. Here's the problem. We only have one shot. We, and have, we have to be right about it. I get it, I, I do get you, that. Do you really think that this is the best chance of success, that they're ready, that they can do it? I do. I do. You truly do. I do. I, th I do. Well, let's go ahead and do it. I'll sign. This faith that progress and technology was going to be our saviour was also at its height in the years before the First World War. Even problems, and the future will certainly have its share of problems, can be diffused if we plan ahead. What was interesting about FM was his ability to talk to a wide range of people. I mean, he would give talks to the police department on, you know, immortality. And I saw you know, that in the, in the newspaper, I thought, how does he manage to do that? Partly maybe he's a very gracious fellow. He would always call people my dear, and he was very, uh, very kind of fatherly or uncle-like. So his personality allowed him to be able to talk to people who normally, like the police, really, but to these ideas, you wouldn't expect that. I'm very focused on the election, so I can't really, I only have so much <laughs> bandwidth for, for everything else. But it's not that I don't think this is ever possible, or but I don't think that in my lifetime it's possible. And also, I've, as I've said to Johnny before, to me, part of what makes life meaningful is that it ends, you know? As you go through the different stages of your life, you know, in your 20s, you're not really thinking about, oh, I'm gonna die someday, maybe not even your 30s. No idea. No, but like, but you know, but like, it's not like a, you're not thinking about the consequences yeah. as much. If you were actually like given the opportunity to be, you wouldn't take it. No. You wouldn't? No. Really? Really. You don't think that your aspirations and your goals would like transform and change like over time? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. I guess I'll think about it more, but I've always said like, I want to, I wish I was like a vampire so I could live forever because <laughs> I feel like. Looking back, like when I was in high school, I was like, oh, I'm gonna have this, 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 and this, and this. And like, now I'm here, and I'm like, I didn't go off track. I just haven't gotten there as fast as I needed to, so it's like, what the hell? I need four lifetimes in order to achieve everything I want to, and yeah, if I had much longer time to live, then, then you would have to. Then I would, maybe I wouldn't worry so much. Right. But, you know, you don't know. FM isn't the final word on transhumanism anymore. The transhuman movement itself has evolved, fractured, just like any other belief system. It's not all campfires and kumbaya anymore. But I never said it was. Are you aware there are people out there who already consider themselves transhuman? And believe yeah. me, most of them have no desire to see the rest of us regular humans stick around. I mean, but that's crazily alarmist. I mean, the core transhuman beliefs remain the same, that we're going to transcend our biological limitations and create and achieve an abundant future. Yeah. And, and the Statue of Liberty still says, give me your tired, your poor, your hung, huddled masses yearning to be breathe free. Does that sound anything like modern immigration reform? No, but I'm not sure where you're going. How would one of these groups go about achieving this abundant future of immortality? FM relied on a faith in technology, optimism, altruism. But as long as people with personal agendas control the technology, why is there cause for anything other than skepticism and, quite frankly, being absolutely fucking terrified. If the goals of, you know, many transhumanists come to pass, then uh, reality becomes a highly mutable thing, right? And uh, virtual and real become hard to distinguish between, right? How do you manage that power? Well, it occurred to me that we needed uh, this kind of technology. We needed 
wise, compassionate, intelligent machines that would transcend the, uh, the, the foibles of human intelligence, of the human urges that really drive intelligence to chase these evolutionary motives rather than some kind of greater good. Once you start saying, oh, this is frightening, we want to halt work on this, what we figure out is there one best safe way to do this, you've failed because the people who keep on working on it are failed states or some biohacker in mom's basement who everybody says, well, he was a nice guy and very quiet, but you know, we didn't know he was going to do this. What is the biggest problem facing humanity? Well, humanity, I suppose. Uh, humanity's uh, willful stupidity. Um, when there is such enormous potential. I don't actually think that it's so complicated. I think you're always a looker for something or other, you know. It's an attractive thought, actually, that we've got a future that is so multifaceted. It's all this FM stuff is a utopian thing. So I could have joined a cult. You could have joined a cult, maybe. Did you set the burger alarm? No. Captain's log, star date, <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> I'm part of a secret, unregulated experiment that could change humanity forever. No one's discussing the implications of immortality and what will happen once we become immortal. And who knows what other world altering. Charlie, can you go to sleep? You have to get the kids in the morning. Well, who knows what other scientific secret experiments are happening in the dark behind closed doors right now. Yeah, I'll turn the lights off. Hello. This is Johnny. Okay. But everything's going to wind up on the backup drive in the office in real time. So even if they take your phone, even if they torture you, even if they hook your nipples to a car battery, we'll get most of them. We are talking to Floor Schnall, a longtime partner of the Futurist FM 2030. Before he identified as a futurist, he was a novelist, and his work was actually quite dark and fatalistic. What do you think caused this shift? You're right, that there was a real switch. It was. It was like an 180 degree change of course. If he was going through a philosophical change, even then he was very obsessed with the idea of death, poverty, inequalities. Surprised? Yeah, big time. Sorry about this. What's going on? Well, um, it's just that what I'm about to tell you, I, I know that you have Flora and FM's best interest at heart, so I can trust you, I hope. I absolutely believe in the work that I'm doing at Clio. We've made so much progress. I never expected to make it to human trial in my lifetime. It's too soon. We are the breakthrough generation. Perhaps the greatest breakthrough of all is in our outlook. The dawning awareness that from here on, everything is possible. Success or failure are two sides of a monumentally problematic coin. Either way, the world isn't ready. There's been no public debate. The wrong publicity or a failed trial at this stage sets the whole industry back decades. There is no room for pessimism. No room for the old world psychology of despair. The cloned sheep? wasn't announced to the public until she was almost a year old, and her gross genetic issues took even longer to reach the public. That won't fly with a human being. We have come too far, triumphed over too many impossible barriers to allow ourselves now to remain bogged down. Sebastian doesn't have any of these concerns. Yeah, huh? well, Sebastian wants to see his life's work realized. And that obsession has led to some really poor decisions. Sebastian sold out the ethical ramifications of our work in exchange for an accelerated timeline. I mean, I was in the lab, you were all there, you were telling me I need me to get Florida a synth authorization. 
You're kidding, right? You expect me to expose myself even further? All the proof that you need is what you see around you. Don't let this happen. I really don't know what to believe. I thought you were having an affair. No. No, definitely not. Not my type. You have to tell Flora. Not until I have some sort of hard evidence. Not until there's something tangible. I mean, this could be just... Just her trying to sabotage the trial. I mean, God knows why. I mean, she could be that she found religion. It could be that she's slept with somebody. It's an office romance gone bad. I, w I, I don't want to be used. I don't want to be used by her to manipulate... I feel manipulated, and I, I don't know what's real, what's not real. It doesn't matter. Flora deserves to know, especially with the fundraiser that she's having this weekend. Well, that's exactly why I don't want to alarm her. I'll tell her. I'll tell Flora. I promise. We must not think of ourselves as merely spectators. Look up into the sky any clear night and you will see bright stars that were not there before. It is our collective genius that has altered the cosmos. You know, I didn't realize they were like building him a new body. My wife got sick and we were told she probably wouldn't have children to, that we should harvest eggs and freeze them. And we did. And we did that 11 years ago. I got a kid who's one year old. I want to see them grow up. You know, I like. I wish I had started when I was 30 instead of 60. Yeah. I look good, but I mean, really, let's be realistic. All right. So, okay. okay. What do you think? It's the Eagle Nebula. Right. Beautiful. It's going to look good for. What's the name? Right. It works, doesn't it? Yeah. It'd be good if somebody was here for it. I called like four or five times, and yeah. I, no one's been getting back to me, but I'm emailing them now. No. So. He, he's on his way. Trust me, he's on his way. The fear of death is always there. It's always there. We make believe it is not. We live in denial, but the fact is it's always there. Not just the fear of one's own death, but the fear of all, the death of all the people we love, the, 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 the death of all fellow humans. How's this trial being funded? One of too many unanswered questions. Who will benefit from the technology? Who will take care of the patients and any unforeseen medical needs they might have? What are the protocols here? Oi, quickly, uh, Kayla, uh, get, get his entrance, get his entrance. Oh, okay. get his entrance. Okay. Let's do this, okay? Hey, uh, Johnny, and friends. Hi, guys. Surprise. Can I? I know you're expecting my good friend Neil, but I've asked him not to come. Oh. Say, so, would you mind if I spoke to uh, Johnny alone? Okay. No, it's good to see you. What are you doing here? Well, I, I know you wanted to interview me for your uh, tribute film. This is a tribute film, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's do it. <clears throat> OK. Um, Why don't you ask me whatever you want to know about FM? Um, yeah. Um, I've got tons of questions. But I get, let me lead with, what did you most admire about FM? Oh, well, <clears throat> quite a bit. <laughs> is um, optimism and uh, his imagination and his loyalty. And <clears throat> that's, uh, that's something I've been worried about with you, Johnny. Yeah. Why? Well, <clears throat> you know, we only brought you into this because uh, we needed Flora to feel more comfortable. And <clears throat> of course, <clears throat> we wanted to uh, honor FM's wishes. <clears throat> Are you okay? Can I get you some water? I'm fine. Thanks. I guess what I'm trying to say is now that Flora has signed, I've become increasingly uncomfortable with the number of people you've been talking to. Now, FM thought quite a lot of you. And I want to believe in his judgment. But something is telling me you're not a team player. How come you changed your name to FM? FM to me evokes the future. It is uh, a name without nationality or history. How old are you right now? 
I have no age. I am born and reborn each day. Every day I change, we all do. My grandmother used to say that one lie begets another. I was drowning in deceit. Sebastian believed I was a spy, or at the very least a liar, and perhaps I was. Flora believed that I was blissfully creating an adoring homage to FM. And Jason, well, Jason was actually happy. He'd bought that our film could create a brighter future. When you were my age, did you like school? Not really. You? No. Classes are boring and they make us sing stupid hymns. And people bully me for being Jewish. I'm sorry to hear that. It's okay. You should be proud of your personal achievements, not some cultural or national identity. Take pride in being a part of the human race. The opportunity to improve your world is always within your grasp. This, I mean, I was in the lab, you were all there, you I need you to get forward your SIND authorization. <sighs> Why me? Why not go directly to Flora? Flora's ruled by emotion, and you'll tell her the truth. I know it's a bit much taken in. <laughs> <laughs> so... A bit much. Jesus Christ, Johnny. This is like, this is resurrection shit. I mean, she's right. This is gonna blow people's minds, Johnny. I mean, this is just the religious right. You're gonna go nuts. The fanatics from around the world. I mean, this is making me very uncomfortable, to be honest with you. I just, this is a bombshell party. I mean, well, you've got to keep it to yourself. You cannot tell any. You cannot tell anyone. This is. This is. You cannot tell anyone. I can hear C yeah. spitting. Yeah. Why you haven't come to me sooner? I don't really understand. First of all, I mean, you know, I've been working. I've been working on stories about. These private equity guys, the private cap, the financiers out in Silicon Valley, pumping all this money into bioscience technology, including life extension. I know I told you this. I call it pay or die capitalism. Hmm. It's catchy. catchy yeah. right? Thank you very much. <laughs> Billionaires investing tons of money into technologies that they think are going to make them live forever. My favorite one is this woman right here, Patricia Thiessen, right. of Prov Equity Capital. Just hit play. Oh, yeah, I mean, of course the first immortals will come from the 1%. Why wouldn't they? Unfortunately, technological breakthroughs don't always lessen inequalities. More often, they increase it. But the greatest inequality exists between people who are alive and people who are dead. And that is the inequality we are working to fix. Nice. Smoking, huh? In her little techno-utopia, I mean, only a few thousand Americans live forever, driven around by robot chauffeurs or whatever, and the rest of us all die unemployed at age 60. And I'm willing to work with you and to protect you on this. Yeah, that's what we want. All right, well, I'm also willing to, you know, help you get to the bottom of whatever's going on here, but you got to give me an exclusive on this. I'm not going to burn you. All right. Especially not if I'm going to lose a story like this. I mean, so, I want this story. So I will give it to you. Cross my heart. I hope to uh, die, I guess. Huh. <laughs> and come back. And come back. All right. Modern technology cannot wait for human conditionings and class struggles to go through their relatively slow evolution. This new technology is impatient. It is dissolving barriers which otherwise would have taken decades, even centuries, to erode. Again and again, people around the world confuse technological progress with social progress. Sadly, the two do not necessarily advance hand in hand. What about the rumors Adivaxis has secret labs in Ghana for unregulated pharmaceutical experimentation? Can human genes be patented? The Supreme Court has heard arguments on a case that will determine the future of genetic research. Would you want to wait until a convoluted bureaucracy allowed you access to remission? Royalties for the new technology could be worth billions of dollars. Without ownership, there is a lack of control. Without control, there is, for lack of a better word, anarchy. That's it, thank you. You, Johnny, can be part of the change in people's thinking. If you make films or TV series, it seems to me you need to know about this future of ours. You know, every quarter, every semester here in this class, we have had anywhere from five to 15 people from the entertainment industry, filmmakers, TV series people, and so forth. And they come here and they sit in, and presumably, they lock into these uh, studies and uh, benefit. We've been editing non-stop. It's ridiculous. I'm introducing a trailer I've never seen. 
months later, years later, they, I get a call from them and say, hey, did you see my film, you know, or my TV series on the future or something? And of course, I happen to have seen it. I see I'm a film buff. And I find that their work was absolutely outrageous. Very anti-future, very non-future, very low resolution. I say, well, you didn't learn a damn thing in class, did you? I say, well, yes, I, but, but you know, it's not my fault. It was really the director's fault. It was the producer's fault. It's the public, what the public wants. Humanity is hardly the bastion of altruism that FM predicted. What about the future yeah. that you don't like? That it's not happening fast enough? I do not know of a single truly sophisticated film on the future or a TV series on the future. Except for maybe 2001. Thank you very much. Scott, thank you. Thank you very much. Dear ones, as FM used to say, today or tonight, we pay tribute to an extraordinary human, FM 2030. To say that FM was unique is an understatement. His vision, his wisdom, his mellifluous voice with his rolling R's, his warm smile, his empathy, his humor. We aim with this film to capture and to celebrate his essence, his optimism about the future and the triumph of science and the technology he so brilliantly predicted. Thank you all for coming. I hope you enjoy the premiere premiere screening of the film, of the trailer, the trailer. of the trailer. The film is yet to come. <laughs> <sighs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Roll it. Ours is the first age of optimism, an age of breakthroughs in all areas of all societies. We are well on our way to a new biological stage, free of pain, free of suffering, free of aging, free of death. Is technology the solution to all of our problems? They've created a technological religion because the minute you offer immortality, you're a religion. It's not difficult to get people to follow something. You know, anybody who is not embarrassed or ashamed can pass himself off as God and get a following. We are still too programmed by the old world psychology of failure, too hobbled by guilt and shame and self-doubt, too scarred by eons of suffering to fully appreciate the meaning of our new age. The human spirit is resilient, but are we wise? The question is of population with respect to resources. And it seems that, yes, there is a problem with that. With the ecological crisis, the faster it goes, the faster it goes, it begins to be exponential. This is the hell that technological religion tells us is going to be there. But they're right. In a rapidly changing world, how do we maintain our humanity? And one could argue that the internet actually distances us from each other. That remoteness promotes antagonism politically. The big brother is actually getting into our brains. The progress that technology has made, the screen that sits on the table, knows the mobile computer, and then the smartphone, and then the glasses. Next thing is here. Who will decide our future? Whether it's government funded or not, technology is moving more rapidly than anyone and regulate it. The problems are really obvious of human suffering. It is a very dangerous distraction that some magical machine moment is going to solve all of our problems. I think this is ridiculously naive. It's our choice. Who do we want to be in 2030? Let us not be afraid of vision and hope. It was the daring of visionaries that has brought us this far. From gloomy, primordial marshes to where we are today, 
reaching for the galaxies, reaching for immortality. Are you ready? Thank you very Fantastic. much. Wonderful. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yes. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Oh, Johnny, congratulations. Uh, uh, thanks a lot. Awesome. Uh, thanks awesome. a lot. Thank you. Awesome. 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 You're great. 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 Oh, yeah. uh, what do you think? What do you, what do you think? Well, Johnny, it seemed to have nothing to do with FM. Well, what do you mean? I had all his FM's ideas in there. I had no idea what you had in mind, but it certainly wasn't this. This wasn't a tribute. What have you done here? Flora, I mean, I don't know what you, what you mean. Flora, I congratulate you and appreciate your faith and dedication in spite of all the stuff that's happened with Cleo. What, what, what has happened with, with Cleo? What do you mean? You haven't told her. <laughs> Dr. Fifey came to see me, and she had some information, but I wanted to vet it. Ridiculous information about social implications, this, that, and the other. She's probably got some crazy axe to grind. It just seemed like completely off the rails. It didn't make any sense, and you had, you had a lot on your plate. Johnny, you have you lied to me. You've never changed. You've only thought about yourself. Let's get this straight. You're off the project, and you're not invited. You're no longer invited to the reanimation. We're through. You've, Honestly. you've reached a whole new level of asshole. Thora. Cut, cut the fucking camera. Jeff, cut. Cut. <sighs> At different points in my life, I took what I wanted from FM's philosophies. Just have a good time, party, chase women, enjoy life, no responsibilities, no nothing. Wake up, Coppola. Dude, I'm sorry we had to bail early. We uh, thought we were having a baby, but as it turns out, just gas. So good times. Yeah, yeah it's, it's Johnny. I, 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 I can explain. I can... I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry to hear that. What was that? What's the matter? Irving Renfeld died last night. And um, they, want, they want all their footage back, and they want it back immediately, and they're probably going to sue. God, Johnny, he doesn't hate you. He's just let down right now. So what are you saying? You don't want me to come to Israel with you? <laughs> it's my son's permits are in Israel. I'm not, not going to be there. Please let me speak to him. When the movie comes out, like you said, it'll take care of itself. It won't. It won't take care of itself. It won't. Have a little FM optimism here, Johnny. I'm, I'm trying. There is no movie. There is no fundraiser money. Flora knows I've been lying to her all, all along. I'm, I'm not even invited. We're not invited to the reanimation. Hi, Flora. It's Johnny. If you could please leave me, if you could please give me a call back, that'd be really appreciated. Do you have any regrets? Would you have done anything different? Is this where I'm, I'm supposed to say how I wish I'd spent more time at home? Going to soccer games, school plays, owning a goddamn dog? I'll never regret building something that will live long past me. Say, if, for example, you had a choice to coasting into the future, indefinite future, endless future, what are the parts of you you would like to take with you to the future? <laughs> now you're a man. Do you feel a man? You were a man this, weren't you? Can I go and get Flora? I can... No, no, no. Daddy. Tell you she's going to get Flora. Do you know, I think it's giving me a razor. I'm sure you'll all be delighted to hear that this is going to be a short speech. <sighs> I, I'd like to thank my parents for this lovely mitzvah party and, and I'd also like to express my deep regrets to all the sufferings I've caused them in the last 13 years. And I hope my activities in this regard will be somewhat diminished. A miracle should occur this very night and I'm supposed to awake a paragon of virtue. Johnny, if we must believe in something, let us not believe in our past, but in our future. You finally have to live 
with the realities of the world as it is today. You cannot develop an identity based on the illusory identity of forefathers long dead. Okay. Are you, that was a nice yawn. Are you getting sleepy? I can't feel that. You can't sleep in your own bed? Why? I can't feel that. You're too scared? We can all gain much more, you and I, from facing our real past. What matters most is that you and me and everybody else are about to swing through solar systems and galaxies. I'd like to get some help with my life. What do you think? I'm sorry. Huh. What constitutes human is a great question. The essence of being human are some of the more valuable things we do, like have relationships, be creative, be loving, be funny, be sexy. How would you teach a machine compassion? I'm not sure. Let's take Star Trek as an example. The physicians in Star Trek have incredibly sophisticated devices, but the final decision is made by the physicians. We're already in an age where our bodies and our minds are starting to meld with technology. And now we're putting chips on the brain that can enable a quadriplegic to control a robotic limb, for example, by thought alone. How far do you take that? I think that we need to ask questions about um, what is meaningful about humanity. It may be true that we can't really understand this until we evolve to some advanced states. So, so in a sense, we're going to have to sort of take a leap of faith and just hope that it works out for the best. And if it doesn't, then, um, then, you know, then we just sort of say, well, you know, nature, nature took a strange turn and now we're, now we're monstrous alien beings. If you could just keep living, then you really need ethical grounding. You need to, to have some deep ethical truth. I'm a little tiny bit different from when I was a week ago or a year ago. And we die a little bit every second to an extent. That's, that's human nature. It does put it in perspective that immortality is, is illusory. There's no way to have immortality because to have immortality, you would have to have no change. We are creatures that are all about change. The burdens of selfhood have never been heavier. Never in the history have we had to decide how much we work, how much we eat, how much we sleep, and how much we fuck. It's a lot of decisions to make alone, which for all of history, an institution called religion and culture decided for us. There's a reason why we can fight over so many things, because it used to be told to us what we need to do. Now we have to decide. If you travel across time and time and again across this planet, one of the things that cannot help but strike you is the remarkable, the remarkable adaptability of us organisms. I don't see a limit to human adaptability or human resilience or the human capacity to move and to grow. This is, in fact, one of the great, great, extraordinary things about us. And this is implicit in all, all of our women's movement, the sexual revolution, the consumer movement, the environmental movement, the global movement. Seriously? There is an explosive growth and access of information which becomes increasingly difficult to monopolize and to manipulate. The superiority of power will really phase out. Jason, I don't know what to do. I just got this really weird file on my computer. I don't know who it's from. I don't know what it is. It's really strange and I'm really panicked about this. This isn't a joke. Are you rolling it? So check it out. See this account here? This account is linked to this company, Advaxis. Right. Advaxis is a shell company run by none other than Patricia Thiessen. Remember her? Yeah, I remember The rich that. shall live forever. Yeah, nice woman. Advaxis has 112 new patents and IPs ready to be approved on September 23rd. Is that Seth Rams reanimation day? <laughs> yeah, Johnny, of course. I mean, once the reanimation is successful, they're going to own the technology, like all of it. Okay. This is a list of 1,162 current Clio patients and future freezees. There you are. Yeah. But only two 
have scheduled reanimations. FM and this guy right here. Sebastian, Sebastian Smith. Right. But he's not even dead. I don't know. Maybe it's a typo. Maybe the maybe the person who sent it this file could tell us. Well, it can't be Fife. So just look. I mean, it has to be Fife. Okay. Eight. Wait one second. Dr. Linda Allison Fife. Right. She's been receiving substantial wire transfers from Clio's chief competitor for the last six months. She's a mole. I mean, there are no good guys. <laughs> of course, there's no good guys, Johnny. I mean, this is like a race to play God. If God were really friggin' greedy. I can't deal with this, Doug. Like. I've got Alexander's bar mitzvah, and, and I'm, I'm going to I'm going to Israel the oh. day after tomorrow. Yeah, you're doing you a really you're, you're doing a really great job, Alexander. Like a fantastic job. Thank you. Yeah. Johnny, I hate to show you this, but I think Israel might be the safest place for you to be. This was also in the file. That's that's our fundraiser. Look on the bright side, Johnny. Everything in this file, everything indicates that FM's reanimation is gonna work. I mean, all the experts are saying so. I mean, if that's true, this is gonna be the biggest story since Genesis 1. Oh, so it's, what time is it? Um, 3.13. Between a $2,500 burglar alarm that my wife never sets and, um, and, a, and me, a 160, 170 pound vegetarian Englishman and a few karate lessons that I took when I was eight, maybe nine years old, my family should be quite safe. I've got my tennis racket and uh, my bag of bagels. Phew. At least I'll be on time for the flight in the morning. Society has always had to catch up to technological innovation and that catch up process is frequently messy and sometimes comes with casualties. I would like the option of being able to extend my life. The idea of immortality frightens me. Societies change in unpredictable ways, and I don't know that I would have a place in society 200 years from now. To me, the most important vista is not to go to the moon or to Mars. It's to actually understand our own thinking and be able to actually expand our thinking. The most powerful, important force in the universe is intelligence. You know, the last time we expanded our neocortex, was when hominids developed this large forehead. That created art and science and technology. So what are we gonna be able to create the next time we expand it? We can't even answer that. It'd be like trying to ask a hominid before the invention of language, well, gee, what are you gonna do with this extra brain power? Have you that's barbaric? Oh, no, no, that's not. None of us in our current form are capable of understanding the whole picture. That's what excites me so much about life extension research. Maybe one of us will live long enough to figure it all out. The current ethics we have and we have had are all based on the human condition. A few fleeting decades of existence. So in the 1950s, the late 50s, I worked at the United Nations. I remember to my horror one day at the Security Council, the, the head of the American mission, during one of the deliberations between Israel and the Arab countries, he gets up and he says, now, 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 he says, he says, we want our Jewish and Muslim friends to get together and resolve their differences in a truly Christian spirit. Christian spirit? <laughs> he, almost, he almost started another war there. Best advice for him is don't turn out like you. Ah, Any words of wisdom for Alexander? Just be Alexander. Cheers. Next time we go to tell him something. My dear ones, let us continue making our planet cozy. Love you. Be true to your heart and don't listen to everything your parents tell you. Hello. Get your buns over here. Hey. He's oh. impossible. I'm dropping it. Listen, I have some advice. What kind of advice? For Alexander and perhaps for his father too. Well, a man is always honest and forthright. 
speaks his mind, and he always strives to see the best in people. Do you get that, Johnny? I do. I'm Flora. I'm so sorry. I really am sorry. I never thought things would come to this, and I re I, I really apologize for everything. What? What? Johnny Boston making an apology. I must record this. I must record this for posterity. I'm listening. Look, I don't even know where to begin. I lied about everything, everything. I'm, I, I really am. Sorry, you were right. I wasn't thinking about FM. I was just thinking about myself. If FM's coming back, I want everything to be okay between us. Is, is, is FM coming back, Johnny? I look, I have every confidence in the technology. I really do. I, I didn't lie about that. I really have every confidence in the technology. But I don't have confidence in the people who control it. I, I know this isn't the ending for the film you wanted. But I guess we can face Sebastian together. Yeah, of course. I'm there. I'm there for you. I'm definitely there. Thank you. If it is possible for us to identify with or to be committed to a brother or a sister or a father or a mother or an American Jewish person who identifies with an Ethiopian Jew, or a Muslim from Morocco who identifies with a Muslim from Indonesia, it seems to me that it ought to become possible to identify with and to be committed to all humanity. We impute to others a violation of human rights. Well, we ourselves are violating human rights because we're bombing human beings still filming these uh, yeah. interviews? Because you're going to want to get this on camera. Dr. Linda Fife. Yeah, I remember She that. no longer works at Clio. Where she was. Her contract's been terminated. Her apartment's empty, and she's left no forwarding address that anybody knows about. It's just weird. It's weird, but I'm not worried about it. I will find her. What's most important is I know why Seb Smith has a reanimation date. Dr. Sebastian Smith, stage four, inoperable. This is his x-rays? Yes. And get this. His reanimation date fits roughly with how much time they're giving him. Understand? So, so FM was a guinea pig for a Sebastian all along. This was just a preparation for his trial. Yeah, I mean, can you think of a better reason to get into bed with Patricia Thiessen? I mean, FM's not going to be his guinea pig. FM's out. What do you mean, FM's out? Tomorrow, we, we're going to see Sebastian and to call off the trial. There's no reanimation anymore. None. It's... Well, yeah. that really sucks. It, it, it does, but at the same time, we don't want to be involved with them. I was just really looking forward to my first reanimation, I guess. Me too. Me too. I was looking forward to the biggest story of your career too. I was definitely looking forward to that. And it's not over. We, we could, there's still a story here. I've always been obsessed by time and seeing how short life is. And to me, every decision you really make in life is a trade. And, you know, we do things that may not be all that important in life, but they don't take very long and they're fun, so you do them. The only thing I'm afraid of is time because it moves inevitably and 
We know where the end is. Uh, it's, it, you know, aging is a terrible game because you can't win and you have to play. And I thought the only antidote to that was to use my time as wisely as possible. Hey, Johnny, it's Jason. I got your 600 messages. I also got the camera you sent. That was nice, man. Uh, I, I would assume it's a bribe to get me to forgive you. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to, but uh, I can shoot tomorrow. So, um, yeah, I guess I'll be there, asshole. All right, see ya. FM certainly wouldn't approve of this, guys. That's yeah, gonna be great. <laughs> You're good to go, for Okay, let's go. All right. You can't do that. Oh, I can, Sebastian. I've rescinded the authorization. I'm doing what's best for FM. This is what's best for FM and for everyone else. The trial is less than two weeks away. October 7, 78, my birthday. Sweet, lovely Flora, how come my love for you grows bigger and bigger and bigger? Just think of it, a hundred years from now, we will look back on these years as the very beginning of our magical friendship. Our entire body design is geared to FM. The bionics, the brain mapping, everything. Do not be afraid to fly. The lighter you are, the higher you'll fly. The higher you fly, the freer you'll feel. Love you, FM. I want you two out of here. Out of here. Shall we go? He was a hunk, as my, as my friends would say. He was a hunk. Traveling with him was a peach because he spoke like, I don't know, 10 languages. He was a real linguist. Of course, having a last name 2030 when we were traveling, making airline reservations and trying to get, 2030 was very, very difficult. He wasn't absolutely perfect. He did have some very annoying habits like his lateness. You could never count on him. Although he never missed a plane, but he was always late. He would be writing or thinking, and he would just lose track of time. He'd always say, well, at least I always show up, because some people, you know, don't come at all. But he would come, even though it might be two or th three hours. And he wouldn't let me tell people that he was a vegetarian. So very often, he'd go to a dinner party anyhow, and there'd be nothing for him to eat except some bread and butter and Why a vegetable didn't, or two. Why didn't he? He didn't want to uh, have them have to fuss or bother huh. about him. But to me, he was pretty, pretty ideal. Um, he just had a great sense of humor. He was a visionary. His optimism buoyed you up. Um, he just made, uh, he always saw the good in people. He brought out the best in everyone. I always told him he should be a psychologist because he'd get, he'd be talking for hours in the night, giving people really sound advice and listening. I'm sure you experienced that yourself. No, he gave me wonderful advice. I mean, I feel like I, I lose track of it, but he did bring out the best in me. I think you certainly did. I think even your parents thought that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, it is disappointing. Yeah, I miss him. I think I miss FM more now than ever, really. <sighs> so to yeah, so it's been a bit of a journey. You bet. When FM passed when he when he died there was no funeral there was no grave there was no period of mourning in judaism there's a lot of ritual there's a funeral there's a shiva where we come together 
to remember. And then there's the mourner's prayer, Kaddish. This is a solitary experience. And we deepen the parts of our memories that sustain us, the essence of the person that we've lost. Epel was known for his technological predictions, but also for his sometimes unorthodox views on social change. I see a shift. I see it happening every day. A better world, a lovelier world, a less manipulative world, a world less torn by domination and submission. Millions of years from now, wherever we are in the universe, whoever we are, however we look, we will always remember these years. There are many more people that can fast to flee their homes. Our technology is pulling us in both directions. It was set to close its borders to asylum candidates. We will wing across the planet, from global friends to global friends. I don't think we should be too optimistic. This report says that the situation is getting worse, not better. We will be fluid and on the move. We will be universal. And now, it's, uh, it's over. I, I don't think, nothing is ever, quote, over. I think it's just, the beginning. I'm not sure. Be nice. Well, be optimistic. I'll try and be optimistic. Mr. Boston. I will try and be I'll try and be optimistic. So you're you're off to Europe soon. Next week. Alright, well. Well, one thing that FM didn't like was the opera, <laughs> that was for sure. You going to the opera? I'm going to the opera. Well, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. As we reflect on, on our loved one, we keep them alive the tactile relationship is gone, but we have this dynamic, evolving relationship through memory. But there were no prayers, there was no meditation. There's, there's just a bench on a beach. I did. I did. I showed them the text. Uh, everybody's seen it. We're all upset. We're, we're, we're going to be there in 10 minutes. Okay. All right, Doug got a flight. I got a text. Great. Okay. Awesome. If they've really started to thaw, I'm not sure if there's anything we can do. Why can't they just refreeze them? Once they've started the reanimation, Jason, there's, there's no turning back. You mean like when you defrost chicken? FM isn't a I'm chicken. So, an idiot. We're we're all nervous. We're upset. Let's let's chill it. Let's hang in together. Where are we going? Where is our destination? No one can say. From here on, the only barriers are the limitations in our own imagination. Into the trial. Where, where's Seb? Where's Seb? Where's Seb? We need to see Seb. No, he's with Seb right now. They are with me. They are with me. I will take them down. Sorry, I'm late. I'm, I'm not... Hey. Boo. Hey, man. How are you, sis? Hey, Doug Donovan, reporter of the Times. Hey, good to see you. This way. Sorry, you okay? You okay? Okay, you need to help us. I spit in the face of time that has disfigured me. Rage is one of Samuel Beckett's characters. Today we can do more than spit and rage.
Are you rolling? Okay. Turn the cameras off. No. No more secrecy. If we're going to do this, we're going to do this out in the open, the way FM wanted. I cannot do that. Why? Would that piss off your community-minded partners at Advaxis? You know, we're set to publish at any time. And when we do, by morning, it's going to be front page news. You're killing FM. And you, Seb. We know about the second trial. We know you're the second trial. Well, if you know that, then you have nothing to worry about. This is not only my legacy, this is my life. This reanimation is going to be successful. Flora, don't you want to see FM again? Sebastian, more than anything. Mm -hmm. But FM wouldn't want to come back this way. Unlike you, he was interested in the greater good. That doesn't make any sense. Of course it 50 does. 50 years from now, people are going to be dying unnecessarily if you stop this. Do you want that responsibility? No. Do you? You have a choice. Either you go down with Advaxis, or you help us take Advaxis down. You can do that. By making this technology public, everyone can benefit. Everyone can have a fair shot at beating death. I want to thank you, thank you for sharing in this wonderful journey into the future. I hope that for you and for me, this is not an end, but a beginning. That we are perhaps at the end of just a trajectory, but the beginning of a whole new trajectory. Remember that the future does not end tonight. The future, I hope, for all of us will just begin tonight. do miss him, but I think, Johnny, we will see him again.
claimed to have a deep nostalgia for the future. He spent his life campaigning for a bold new future for mankind and called optimism the new revolution. He strikes me as a very iconoclastic sort of esoteric individual. How is his futurist persona different than his life in private? No, he was always very optimistic in person. He definitely was. FM was like a born writer. I found little notebooks from the time he was six, seven years old, not living in the United States, but writing words in English, lists of words. It was a little notebook. So he was always interested in writing and always interested in English. He became a vegetarian early in life. Tell me about that. He was a vegetarian since the time he was 17. And in Iran, there's a, a holiday, a famous holiday. It's called Day of Sacrifice, where they sacrifice a lamb. And they sacrificed his and his sister's pet lamb. And all three of them became lifelong vegetarians. After that event, they never, never ate meat again. What do you think FM's legacy will be?